It's week three of Fabulous Finds. Nothing special to tell you this week. Just come on in and check out what I have for you this time. So the first Fabulous Find was this little baggie of gold items. I got these at Goodwill for $2.99. It was just a bunch of gold things. And you know how I like to pick through bags and buckets of little things, right? So I said $2.99, I'll take a chance. First of all, there was this little piece. It's a plastic piece of a toy gun. So that'll probably go right in the trash. But then there was also this cool plush lucky rat. I think it's a Chinese lucky rat. And normally you would hang it maybe from your rear view mirror or your backpack. And it's got this lucky rat symbol and this little dangly tassel at the bottom. It's plush gold, super cute. Could be a good luck charm for someone. Couple of bucks I could probably get for that. And then there was this piggy bank from Pike Place Market, Seattle, Washington. They have, a, I think it's a cast iron or a bronze pig statue there that they're pretty famous for. This is that marketplace with flowers and the guys that throw the fish around. So it's a piggy bank. I'm not sure what it's made out of. I th It could be plastic. It could be plaster. I'm not sure. I'm going to pack it carefully either way. I couldn't find any of these that sold or were for sale on eBay except for one guy selling a lot of nine or ten of them for sixty dollars so maybe i can get five dollars for this guy but the real find in that little baggie of things was this junior park ranger badge it's a plastic badge from glacier national park but apparently they make these badges for all the national parks so there are people out there who collect these from each park and these sell for about ten dollars so for my 2.99 bag of little stuff i think this was the real find Next, also from Goodwill, I found this. It doesn't fit very well here. Maybe I'll make it go sideways. This little set of plastic drawers from Bats Maru, which is a, a Sanrio character. And this is from 1997, I believe. So, vintage Sanrio uh, sells decently. It's really a cute drawer set. It says, Mind Deva. And the first one, the next one says look inside, the next one says keep out. And they are actually quite clean inside. Um, and all around, I did need to clean off a little bit of sticker residue. I still didn't get all of it. Of course, take off the price tag. But I paid uh, $6 for this. And I'm pretty sure I can get about $25 for it. Some of these older um, little drawer sets... I've seen go for 60, 40, 60, but I'm going to ask 25 for my Bats Maru uh, drawer set. Speaking of Sanrio, I got this rubber stamp in a bag of a whole bunch of other rubber stamps. When you buy rubber stamps, you want to be careful for flipping purposes. They're heavy to ship. And the rubber stamp craze of the 80s and 90s is over. So some people, well, a lot of people still do crafting and scrapbooking and they still want those stamps, but they can get them dirt cheap. So when you're looking at rubber stamps for flipping, you want to look for something that's unusual. And in that plastic bag of rubber stamps, I think there were five or six of them in there and it was $3. Um, I could see this through the plastic. I said, that. That's really cute. I didn't know at the time that this was Sanrio, but it was different from all the other stamps, and I thought it was cute. So that's why I took a chance on this bag. This character is known as Spotty Dotty. Spotty Dotty, this little Dalmatian character. And this stamp comes from 2006. It's in really nice condition. A lot of people are looking for stamps that are uh, that haven't really been used because using them tends to wear down their edges. So it's in good condition. It does have some ink staining from being stored with other stamps, but you can see it's very clean otherwise, which means that the image is going to be nice and crisp. And so once I got that bag home, I looked in there, I saw it was Sanrio, and I knew I had something here. A little bit of detective work later, and I learned about Spotty Dotty. So Spotty Dotty merchandise is selling from $20 to $60. Um, I originally ran this on auction and it sold for $13, but the buyer never paid for it. So I gave her a couple of weeks. Um, she didn't respond to my messages and never did 
pay. So I went ahead and canceled and I relisted at a fixed price of 18, which was closer to what I wanted to get for this guy. And uh, it sold immediately. It's super cute. It's pretty rare. And Spotty Dotty is quite collectible. So looking for rubber stamps, look for something that's unusual. When it comes to Sanrio, you want to do your homework. Make sure you know about it because there's a lot of Sanrio junk that that you can't uh, resell for much um, but when you find that unusual vintage Sanrio piece it's worth it to pick it up and as long as we're talking about uh, Japanese uh, anime animation manga all of that I got these books I say these books I'm only showing you one but there were actually three of them that they just brought out at Goodwill when I was there yesterday and their books sell for $2.99 each buy three get one free so it always works out to about $2.50 so I paid $2.50 for this it's in really really great condition um, it does have a little I mean you know it's not perfect there's a little um, like a dent on this one. The other one has a little bit of dirt here on the edge. Uh, but this is supposedly all the artwork from their uh, manga series Full Metal Alchemist. So fans would know what was going on in there. And I'm sorry, I should have turned this. <laughs> I should have turned it over like a normal person. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so it's all the artwork. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. It's very, very heavy. These are really brand new except for the wear involved in transporting them to Goodwill and displaying them. So I paid about $2.50. These are selling for about $25 to $30. Uh, I did see one that sold for $60. I see some that are listed for $85. But I'm going to ask $25 and I have three of these. Okay, the last item that, this is not from Japan, but it's Japanese influence. The name of this company is Origami Owl. I got all these little boxes of their little jewelry items from Goodwill yesterday. I was standing at the cash register and I saw these bags with all these little blue boxes. And I said, you know, what's in there? The cashier said she didn't know. So we opened a few. It turns out they're these Origami Owl jewelry pieces. And Origami Owl was a company that was started by a 14-year-old girl. I think it was about eight years ago. And the main focus of the... Uh, speaking of focus, I'm going to try to focus a little better. Uh, the main focus of the company is to provide uh, cute, eye-catching jewelry that you can kind of design yourself. The basic... Um, as far as I always knew, the basic product of the company was always these clear lockets and you could buy and make your very own kind of personalized piece of jewelry by purchasing different charms and crystals and things that you would put inside of that. That's a There's a double pane there. Yeah, You would put it inside and um, they would sort of float in there, your crystals. Maybe you buy a little charm for high school graduation or a little charm for your best friend or your trip to Disneyland. And they would float in there. And they have all types of different lockets. This one is super pretty. I think it's really nice. It has uh, the floating locket. I don't know the technical terms, by the way. I am not an origami owl um, uh, collector, buyer enthusiast enthusiast but why can't i focus on that please there we go uh really pretty pink crystals around that floating locket um they also have this locket style of jewelry in a ring form so there are a couple of rings and this again has the crystals this one has clear crystals the other one had pink ones floating around the edge of that ring uh, they have all kinds of pretty, pretty sparkly earrings that are various crystals and stones. Uh, there's one. Nice studs. They've got some drop dang. They've got some danglers. They have some. I'm not sure where they are. Some drop jewelry. This one is. Um, this one's a watch. And again, it's that locket concept. So, uh, I believe that you can float charms in there somehow don't quote me on it again i do not work for origami owl and i don't know much about it but i think you could put various charms in there as well just as long as you can still tell the time right um there's a 
butterfly charm on the necklace. It's got some crystals floating in it. Here's a regular necklace. There are quite a few of these. I even have one on the chain. And I don't know what to call them. I, I guess they're vials, but this top screws off. So you could put your essential oils in there or um, someone also said, the cashier said, you could maybe put someone's ashes in there and, and carry them around with you. So that was kind of unique and there were, I think, four of those in there. These are, I believe, Cinderella or Tinkerbell. Apparently, Origami has a bit of a collaboration with Disney. Um, I'm trying to get that color on there. So these are Cinderella stud earrings. Really pretty color. Such a nice Cinderella blue. And then I think the most valuable piece really out of the whole set was uh, this guy here. It's another Disney piece. This has a horizontal bar locket in black, which I guess, according to the research I've done, is kind of rare. And it says believe, and it's got, uh, you know, Mickey Mouse colors and floating crystals in there. Really beautiful. I saw these go for around $65 for each. So um, just by asking, then the cashier even said, boy, I didn't even know that those were back there or I would have bought them for myself. These had been in the store since July 4th and no one had bothered to ask what they were. But I got uh, seven bags. There were 22 boxes in all. Each of the seven bags was uh, $2.99, but they were uh, the color of the day, so they were half price. So $1.50 per bag. I got seven bags. I'm listing these for $200. I mean, the Believe one itself is, is worth $65, and then you get 21 others included in there, and some really nice ones as well. We didn't look at this bracelet here, but there are two of these bracelet um, watch bands that are beaded uh, with a snap closure. They're really nice. Anyway, hope to get 200 for all of those, but really enjoyed looking at them and learning about Origami Owl. Okay, let's leave Japan and let's take a look at this Barbie software, Mermaid Adventure and Swan Lake. I got these from that collector of DVDs, so they're in excellent condition, no scratching or scuffing on the case or the disc. I've got Mermaid Adventure and I have Swan Lake here. And it turns out that these are somewhat hard to find, so they sell for about $15 each. Speaking of media, look at what I found, a whole bunch of wrestling videos, wrestling videos. Um, and these are all sealed. Apparently a collector turned in his collection. Um, it was interesting buying these because that collector was very serious. So these are in really nice condition. I got them at Goodwill, so I paid $2.50 each, which is pretty high for a DVD. But these wrestling videos are selling for anywhere from $20 to $40 to $60 dollars per video so I do expect to make my money back and a profit but you could tell he was a serious collector because he wrote on some of the labels he wrote the date he bought it and the date the show aired and the date the DVD was released I mean whoever was collecting these was really cataloging them this one still has the Walmart tag on it because uh, he didn't I'm gonna presume mail sorry but uh, he didn't write on this label on some of them he wrote all of that information in black sharpie on the plastic so I had to take out my bottle of alcohol and, and get all that sharpie off there and I felt kind of bad because you know he had spent all that time um, cataloging it but he was ready to part with it so I was the beneficiary of that um, Unfortunately, I only got half his collection because when I was paying, I, I was bragging about my fine to the um, cashier. And she said, oh yeah, someone else came by and bought about 30 of them this morning before you got here. So I only ended up with, with half the collection. But, um, you know, I'm not going to be greedy. I'm, I'm really happy with them. I got about 27 of them at $2.50 each. And I hope to sell each for at least 20 they don't all sell for 20 some sell for, you know, 5 or $7, but I should still be able to make my money back and a profit. Still in the DVD realm, I want to take a look at these two DVDs I got also at Goodwill. Again, 
paid that high price of two fifty because my favorite thrift store with the five for a dollar DVDs was closed this weekend, so I was stuck with Goodwill. But it wasn't so bad because I found these cool things. I have this sealed DVD, the Sure Thing with John Cusack. Uh, it has all its stickers on it. It's in great shape, and oddly, this particular movie, the Sure Thing, selling for about ten to fifteen dollars. So I'm like, I'm in. And then the other DVD I found there yesterday was this one. It's a Telemundo uh, telenovela with Victoria Rufo, uh, who is a big uh, telenovela star down there in Mexico. And this one was from 2007, I believe. It's the uh, it's a telenovela series. The whole series is in here. Apparently, it is. You know, I was trying to brush off my Spanish, but apparently, it's 15 hours worth of viewing. And these guys are regularly selling for between forty and sixty dollars, and my price was two fifty yesterday. So it's all sealed and everything. Next are these paper punches. I got these at Goodwill. They were two ninety nine each, and then I had to work to take the labels off. But they happen to be the color of the day, so they were half price. So you can think about it as about a dollar fifty each. And these paper punches are used by crafters, um, card makers, scrapbookers to punch out different shapes in paper and cardstock. So uh, one of them is this Christmas ornament. This one is just that plain square. I got this cute, cute, cute owl with a vest and a heart and some little shapes. So you can use those little shapes to make buttons for his desk and eyes. Super cute one. Um, and then I got this guy. This isn't one that punches on the edge. So you can make um, a textured or uh, sculpted edge to your craft whatever it is that you're working on or your handmade card and then there's this one it doesn't look like much here because I didn't actually bring what comes out of it that's what's left that's the shell that's left kind of looks like a tombstone which is appropriate because this is a Halloween one it actually looks like this it's a little trick-or-treat bag and all these leathers punch out so I had all these little T's sitting around a couple of R's uh, that fell out when I punched it but it makes a little trick-or-treat bag cutout that you can attach to treat bags or invitations. Um, or you can make little name tags out of them. But really cute uh, punch. This one is actually by Martha Stewart. And it's a real mystery of a punch. Um, I paid $1.50 each after getting them for half price each. And this one, a lot of people have it listed for $80. But there's only been one that actually sold, and it sold with a bunch of other uh, punches for something like $40. So I'm not sure about the pricing on that, but it seems to be the most valuable of all of them. I would think that this owl would be, would be the most valuable. Um, I'm going to put them all together, sell them as one lot, pack them in a padded envelope, flat rate envelope, I think. I'm going to see how they fit in there because they're super, super heavy. But I think I can get about maybe $20, 25 15 and maybe $5 each for these. So I'll probably either put them on an auction or I will list them for sale for maybe $60 and see what happens. And for my 10th fabulous find, as you know by now, it's a personal favorite, something that I got for me, something that I'm not going to flip. And are you ready? Here it is. It's a piece of artwork. Ta-da! Uh, I actually got this about a month ago at an estate sale uh, from, from a woman who was a chiropractor, health practitioner, a counselor, a poet, um, and an artist. And so she seems like an amazing woman and I really appreciated receiving her items. But I wanted to tell you the reason I put this in here is because this has to be one of my favorite fabulous finds. Really of all time something that I found for me when I walked in I was really looking you know me I was looking for books I was looking for DVDs cassette tapes those kinds of things you know media that's my that's sort of my niche but there was her artwork was everywhere and she was uh, uh, she painted a variety of subjects and in a variety of techniques so there was such a lot to choose from but this piece was something that sort of caught my eye because it's a little 
weird. It's a little quirky. I wasn't quite sure what it was. And um, so I did pause at it for a bit before I just, uh, you know, jumped on those boxes of cassette tapes and DVDs and books and whatnot. And she had some really, really great books. Um, but as I walked around, are you ready? Are you ready for this? As I walked around the uh, estate sale, take a look at what I came across on one of the shelves. That's right. It was the model, it was the inspiration for this painting. And I saw it and I said, oh my gosh, that's what it was. And I've never owned a piece of artwork where I also have the model or what it was that inspired that piece. So I grabbed this, I bought this little case for him. Um, so I grabbed this plush off the shelf and I hustled back out to where I had seen this painting. And there was a lady standing there looking at it. And so I tried to calm myself because I was in at this point. I wanted it. So I tried to calm down, but I think she could sort of feel that I really wanted this painting because she says, you know, what is it? And then I, I took my little plush animal and I quickly hit it behind my back and I'm like, yeah, you know, no telling. And she, so then she leaned over and she picked it up. And the whole time I'm just salivating, really wanting to pick up this uh, this it's an oil pastel drawing by the way well she still she, I think she knew I wanted it because she wouldn't let it go she says I wonder how much it is and she turned it over and on the back we get more information about it um, we here we have the artist's name her name was Catherine Ayers and the name of it is Akohe Kohe where have all the and I'm not sure if the there was more to the title or if that's the title if she put this ellipsis here and we saw that um wherever this was hanging or mounted we saw that she had this for sale or had valued it at 850 dollars so she says boy i wonder if that's the price well then we looked further down and um it was 425 so maybe half price and then written in pencil it was 350. so i think that they had lowered the price uh for the estate sale and here again it says akohe kohe and it says native bird with a unique song this is a native hawaiian bird that's on the endangered species list it's professionally matted and framed and mounted with uv glass so that it prevents 99 percent of fading so a really professional job she says i wonder if that's the price and you know i still hiding my plush behind my back i say i don't know she says let's go up to the cashier and find out so i follow her up to the cashier and uh the cashier says well you know all the proceeds are going to our local um humane society shelter the animal shelter so she says make an offer and that's when the um the other lady lost interest she turns to me she hands it over and she says here you want it and she went on to the rest of the estate sale so phew that was a close call i offered a hundred for it and they took it and it became mine and then the detective work of figuring out what this guy's story is began because when you look at it first of all i was wondering what this red dot was secondly i was wondering what's with this nose and this eye so when i came home looked up a kohe kohe i found that this orange part here is actually on the back of the neck and i was so confused because doesn't this look like a little bear sort of slouched over and that's his eye and nose and the back of the neck well when i took a close look at the plush animal I discovered that that is the back of the bird and this little red sticker is the press here sticker it plays the Okoye Koi song although of course the battery is dead so I can't hear that but she painted that little or drew that little red sticker and I just so fascinated by it but that bird from the front really looks like this and it's got a whole explanation of what this bird is and i bought it this case to live in and keep it protected and so that i could display the two of them together so once i figured out that this is the back of the bird um you know then the the mystery became why would she paint 
Number one, why would she paint a stuffed animal versus the actual bird? Number two, why would she paint it from the back like this? And at this particular angle where the perspective is so confusing. By the way, I am no art expert. I was just drawn to this. And I just love so much that I have the inspiration. So I shopped it around and various people gave me these possible explanations. They said, perhaps because it's endangered, it's looking off to an uncertain future and we see it retreating into an uncertain future. Another possibility uh, someone gave me was perhaps the message is that one day the only thing we'll have left of the akohe kohe unless something is done is a stuffed animal version. Another person said, you know, sometimes artists just paint whatever's sitting there. So I will never know because, you know, this came from, as I said, an estate sale. So I will not ever know the answer, but I just love wondering about the inspiration of this piece and I look on it fondly as I have it displayed up on my uh, up on my piano. So I have this resting on the piano and then this guy sitting right next to it. Anyway, that's it. That's my 10th fabulous find for this week. One that's really special to me because of the story, the interpretation, the endangered species, all of it. I love it all. Anyway, till next week, next week's fabulous finds. Um, I wish you some happy flipping and I will see you then.